Okay, in the, in the last video, I showed you how we could get rid of that, that rough cut white by using the magic wand and then select and mask to feather by no more than two pixels, but it can leave little, little gaps. So whenever you need to directly select something, we just use our good old lasso tool. Now the lasso tool has a direct feathering option in its option. So you don't have to say select and mask for this. Instead, you can just put, if you want a softer edge near the background, you can put in a pixel dimension, no more than two. I'm going to say like 1.2. You can do decimals. And I'm then going to cut my own edge here in the rock mountain. And then I'm going to hit delete. But I need to be on the right layer. There it is. And the more I delete, the more it will bite away at it because of the feathering. And then Command-D to deselect. So if I show you that on this one, instead of using the magic wand again, I can just find my own edge. And because this is fairly organic, as long as I don't have that white halo showing, I can just delete and it will soften just gently as I feather. Now remember that is a setting that's there. So I'm going to want to take that to less and less of a feather as I cut out into the foreground when I want the edges to be sharper and sharper. So that's all working pretty well. Now let me do it the faster way really quick. Just remind you, not only is the magic wand good at selecting similar pixels, it's good at selecting empty space. So if I select the empty space around it, and then I have the select and mask, notice that when you have an active selection with the magic wand, you don't get a direct feathering. You have to use select and mask to do it. But you can have it remember your settings. So you can click it there, and if you're always feathering at like 1.2, or 1.3 or up to two pixels, then it will remember that. And then you just hit delete as many times as you need until that kind of halo is gone. And then command D to deselect. Looks pretty good. And then if I need to, it will remember my feather for the magic wand tool. I can cut into little areas that need a little extra. I'm going to turn off the yellow mountain for a second and just do those same steps to this. These are all internally composited. So magic wand, select all that white, hit delete. See that there's a halo, select the empty space around it. And this will be around all of it now because it's cut out. And then select and mask, it will remember my settings. So I just say OK. And then delete, 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 delete. You can zoom in. Command plus until you can see that edge. And if it needs a little bit more than that, you can always do it again. Select and mask. Remember the settings for the feathering. Delete, 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 delete. And if there are little areas that need it, Again, we're not trying to be perfectionists. We don't have months to create these perfect illusions. We just want something that's good for print resolution. And so in the corner, as you're working, right now it says 300%. That means I'm looking at it with a 300% magnifying glass on what the, the print would be. Like 100% would show me the pixels as I would see them. So if I go to view actual size, that would be matching the pixel resolution to my print. So those faint changes aren't going to be recognizable. I'd say you don't usually need to zoom in more than 200% to see the details you'll see in a full resolution print. So this is 100. You know, if I go 200 and it looks good at 200, I don't need to go further and say, oh, there's a tiny little pixel there. If you go into like 600 or more, you'll actually see the pixel grid 
And that's kind of Photoshop's way of telling you, you know, you're getting too, too obsessed with each pixel. You need to broaden your view. <laughs> so try to try to stay at most zoomed in around 200% to make your, your edits. And you'll see there's a lot of space there. There's a lot of pixels that make up. See, there's, whew, there's my jelly bean. Huge. But sometimes there's little things that need to be fixed. Okay. So I actually like the blue there, but I could goose the blue a little bit. And I can do that with image adjustments. And if something was left out of my, my magic wand selection, like this plate, then I can just go in with my lasso directly and find my own edge. Again, a tablet is helpful for this, but I'm using a trackpad. It works okay. It can work with a mouse. And you can also do it in chunks. You see, you just kind of close the loop. And don't try to select too much all at once. And you don't need to worry about things that are going to get overlapped by elements on top. Right. But I want to give myself kind of a nice mountain range to begin with. So I'm going to now, because I've cut out all those mountains, I'm going to select all those blue mountains, those three layers, and I'm going to say layer merge layers so that all three of those are on the same layer. So that's one element. And that allows me to do things like image adjustments. Let's play with the levels. Let's see how, how bright or dark I want them to be. You, I always start with the mid-tone slider because you're not going to lose pixel definition that way. And I just push it back and forth from the center. Do I want it brighter or darker? I think I want it a little bit brighter than it is. And then I can go to color temperature with color balance. And do I want it to go a little bit warmer? Maybe just a touch warmer in the midtones, but maybe in the shadows a little bit cooler. And then in the highlights a little bit warmer again. I'll give it a little bit more depth and dimension. And you can always check that with your history. So if I go before I did levels and before I did color balance, looks like that. If I wanted to make a big change, I could go to image adjustments, hue saturation, like I did for the jelly bean, and I can actually play with the shifting of the hue. They could be purplish mountains or green. Maybe shift them just a little bit towards purple, like purple mountains majesty in the background. Why not? Okay, now that's going to come in very, very uh, handy as I bring in this other colored rock mountain, right? Because I don't feel like if they're all the same color, it's going to have the same illusion of candy. And this has some different things to select, but I'm going to start with the magic wand, right? And then delete. And then I'm going to go to select and mask. It's going to keep my 1.3 pixel. I can kind of zoom in to see how much that needs. Get that little anti-aliased halo out of there. Pretty good. That's at 200% I'm zoomed in. Sometimes this can happen, it like cut into a highlight. So I just go to my lasso. It's already got a slight feather to it for the background. And I just find my own edge. So I don't want these little fragments sticking out, which can often happen with the magic wand. All right. I'm going to have other things kind of overlapping it at parts. But how do I get rid of these little spots? 
if I don't want them. What I can do is I can internally composite. So I can grab a chunk from here. This works really well for organic material. Like a little patch, hit Command J, and then move that patch. So I have auto select on. Move that patch on top of what I want to mask. You can even copy that same patch, and maybe I don't want it to look too copy pasty, right? So I can Command T, can flip it horizontal. I can distort it. I can even change its color with levels. And then I'm going to merge those three together. And the shortcut for that is Command E, but you can always go to Layer, Merge Layers. I'm not going to worry about this one because it's likely going to be overlapped by my uh, rock candy boulders. And I can see what it looks like behind or in front. And I think I want it in front. All right. And now I might think of setting this jelly bean moon, you know, behind it and maybe rotating it. You know, something like that. It's kind of neat. Looks a little planetoid-ish. Can use my arrow keys to nudge it in one direction or the other. And I can try different positionings. But I want to kind of see where the lighting works best for it. I don't really want it tucked in the corner. And I can make that more dramatic with, with more things we add later. Okay, now with this yellow, I'm going to play with adjustments. Image adjustments, levels. Sometimes you got to push the sliders out of the way so you can see. Do I want it to go brighter? No, I don't think so. Do I want it to go darker? Maybe just a touch in the midtones. That's all I need to do for levels. Color balance. This has a lot of warm to it, so I'm going to take its midtones and go a little bit cooler. Push towards cyan, push towards blues. You see, it's starting to sink into the space a little bit more believably. Shadows really push the blues, really push the cyans. Maybe even move it a little bit away from the reds. And then the highlights, I'm going to try warming up the highlights. I don't try to, I always try to um, differentiate where highlights are warm, shadows are cool. It gives a little bit more dimension. But if something's just overall warm, sometimes you have to cool off everything. So it sits back. And then we can always look at our history and see if those steps helped. And I think they did. I'm going to hit Command S to save. And now we get to some more complicated cutouts. So I've got my mountain range. But now I don't have the clean white background anymore. So how can I get this done? So I can use the regular lasso and just go in and define, especially where it's in focus, kind of cut my own edges, and I can do it in chunks like so. I have a feather of 1.2 pixels. Maybe I want to change that to 0.8. Or I can just hit delete a few less times. <laughs> you have to set your feather before you make your selection for it to hold. So here I'm going to cut away that kind of soft edge and kind of create my own somewhat less soft edge. Oh. On the wrong layer, here we go. So that's quite a bit sharper than what the photograph was giving me, right? And it kind of matches what I want. Now, here you have a lot of contrast already at the edge. So I can cut it away like this. And sometimes you mess up a little bit, right? It's the beauty of it being organic. It's hard when they're smooth and I'm using a trackpad. 
But another way is instead of 